Hey everybody, Lewis here, R Shack Barbecue and other things. Well, today I thought I would do a video on how I prep my chicken thighs for when I have a catering event. I will show you uh, how I set up for it and then the actual trimming and the seasoning. Then we'll go out and put it on the smoker and uh, we'll take a look at them, see how they come out. So let's get into this video. I like to wear an apron. That's step one. Just because it kind of keeps the clothes all nice and clean and stuff. And we got a glove up. Gloves are important. All right, let's get into the meats and potatoes or uh, the chicken. Regular! Mama. I'm going to start out with a large baking sheet. This is an aluminum uh, pan, and I like to foil them. Uh, I put foil on it, and then I just take, this time I'm using uh, canola oil. Uh, I can use, you know, Pam, vegetable oil, anything like that. Um, and I really give it a good coating on here. As this cooks, it actually uh, becomes a liquid and it mixes with the chicken juice and it's just mm, beautiful. All right, so we get that well coated there. Now why I like these is because I can get 30 chicken thighs on this and uh, this fits in my smoker perfectly. First. All right, the next thing um, I have a designated cutting board. I only use this cutting board for when I'm cutting chicken thighs. Uh, I don't cut anything else on it. So I clean it afterwards and I put it away. Then I have a good uh, flexible boning knife, if you want to call it. This is a uh, five and a half inch. I did a review on these in a video. This is the Pit Boss one. I really, really like this knife. I find it very universal. Um, now, as far as the uh, slicing knife that I did the review on, I mean, it does a good job, especially for trimming up briskets. Uh, I use it for trimming, um, but it's already starting to come apart. Um, they're not the best of quality. And uh, when cutting slices, uh, I don't like using this one to cut slices. I go back to my other one. But for uh, trimming them up, this actually cuts really, really nice. All right, here's our chicken thighs. Now these are uh, Sanderson Farms, 100% uh, no artificial ingredients, no added salt. Uh, usually, they come in uh, nine or ten in a package, uh, so that makes it kind of nice. Um, yeah, so that's what I use for my chicken thighs. All right, so what I like to do is I like to come in here and cut this. Get it ripped open, and then I'm going to go ahead and move these so you can see. Now I'm a lefty, so you got to bear with me. So what I like to do is kind of unfold uh, the meat side of the uh, chicken thigh. I keep the skin side like that. I unfold it like this and I just give it a quick little cut like that, cut like that. Basically all I'm doing is kind of squaring them up. Now. Uh, and I'll kind of trim off the excess fat on the top like this. I have a garbage can right here. Throw this waste away. Uh, they will have a vein. And if it doesn't poke itself out, I call that done. Move that one away. Now here's a nice big one. So you can see there's the vein right there. And what I like to do with that is I just take this little knife and I just work it back and forth down the side of each 
of that vein and it'll eventually just pop right out. Come once again where the big knuckle is, trim it across, come around this side, I'll scrape that fat down, trim this off, and then trim this off. See if I can scrape any other fat, and there we're done. Now, like I say, this is what I call my catering cut. This is not competition cut. This is just to get the job done and keep the flavor there. So I just, you know, when you're dealing with catering, time is money. The less time you have to spend trimming things up, the more money you're going to make. So, I try to do it as quick as I can here and get it on the baking sheet and just keep going down the line here. Check to see if you can get that vein. Can it affect anything? Move it along. Now, if this was competition cut, then of course we would take the skin basically all the way off, scrape off the fat, and then pillow it back. Uh, you would also take this knuckle right here and trim it like that. And then you would come around and pillow it out and give it a nice shape. But this is not competition. This is just for eating. So don't worry about getting that involved into it. useful tool is a pie scraper or cutter just a flat just a flat scraping plate that they use uh, I think it's a pastry uh, item they use to cut uh, you know the dough and everything here I like to use it to scrape up any of that excess chicken off the board then we'll take our cleaner Spray the board down. This is step one in cleaning. Besides foil, another great tool that you have, that you need to have, is paper towels. Just wipe it off. So this is my initial cleaning of it back and forth trying to get all that ex excess chicken off of it uh, and we'll actually take this over to the sink and clean it and sterilize it over there but that just kind of does a quick little cleaning of it take some Clorox wipes get it wiped down just so we have it all ready to go over to the sink and wash it There you go down and dirty all right so now we're going to go into the seasoning process and just because of the way i am i like to lay full uh, paper towels down on my on my cutting board here and i debated long and hard uh, whether or not i was going to show my seasonings but i figured i probably should just so you know uh, what I use. So for this order, uh, we're looking at, uh, they wanted 13 chicken thighs. I've got 18 on here, uh, which is fine, but uh, we'll go ahead and get these seasoned up. My main thing that I use, I use two different seasonings, uh, and I'm gonna show you these. This, 
is my base seasoning and it's Riley's Spice of Life Hickory Barbecue Rub. And let me tell you guys, this is amazing. I actually use this on all my meats as a base layer. Um, it smells so good. And I actually, <laughs> I buy it by the box. Uh, so it comes in bulk, I guess, weight wise. I think this is, uh, oh yeah, this is 16 ounces. Um, so you can get it like that. I would go check out their website. They have all kinds of different spices and rubs, uh, but this is one of my favorites and I like it and I use it on pretty much everything. Now, I do use a bigger shaker for it. This isn't their shaker. Uh, this was some other rub I got. Uh, hog rub the squill from Kansas City's Cowtown. Um, I just keep their containers because they're nice and big and uh, I like how they feel and the way that it spreads. So all I do is just come over the top and man you can really really smell that hickory. Oh it smells so good. And I just put down a base coat on them like this. All right now the next rub that i use uh, this one right here this is atkins chicken pork and pork rub and this is amazing stuff too uh, these are this combination oh my probably probably the very best out there um, anyway i just come along just add a little bit of that onto it like so now like I said this particular order uh, they ordered uh, 15 chicken thighs I have 18 here um, which is not that big a deal to me I'm gonna you know let them enjoy three extra pieces they also got pulled pork and uh, some of our other sides but now all I do is just flip them over like so and you can kind of see that oil on it on the skin that. Um, and I just kind of make sure that the skin is spread out so there's no areas like that right there um, hanging over and you can kind of see they're they're all about when you trim them right they're all about the right the same size Let's see here. this one here is a little light on the skin but let's just stretch it out a little bit. Wipe my gloves and hands off here. All right. Come back with our base coat rub of that Riley's Sweet Hickory Barbecue Rub. Mm. That is, wow. About mouth watering every time I use it. And then we come back with Atkins chicken and pork rub. So now the next thing I'll do is I'll actually put these in my uh, two door commercial grade refrigerator. I'll put a piece of foil over the top, stick them in the refrigerator um, and let this rub kind of meld into the meat here for a little while. Um, I won't be putting these on the grill. Let's see, it's, let's check the time. It's 5.30 now. Uh, these will not go on the uh, smoker till 8.30 tonight. Uh, this is actually for a night shift, a small night shift crew. Um, so these won't go on the smoker till 8.30. Their dinner hour is at midnight. I'm gonna put these on at 8.30. They'll be done about 10.30, 11. Uh, and then I'll pan them up and with everything else and take them and uh, drop them off. So that's the base of how I trim my chickens, my chicken thighs, and then how I season them, and then how I just let them sit for a little while. So the well, next video will be of us uh, putting it on the smoker, and then uh, I have to do 
like 130 of them for tomorrow. Um, you can do this the night before and uh, stick them in there. They, it seems to work just fine too. And I'll probably show you those ones, the finished product on those, um, because those will be done uh, early afternoon where these are gonna be like midnight and, you know, I, or not midnight. These will be done like at uh, 10.30 and all I wanna do is get the delivery done and then back home and go to bed uh, because I have a big cook for tomorrow. So we'll get these in the refrigerator and we'll show you the other cook. Here's two tomorrow. pans of our uh, chicken thighs all seasoned up. 30 of them uh, on each of these. We'll get them out there on the insulated vertical smoker uh, and we'll let it uh, run for, I'm saying it'll take about an hour, hour 15 minutes to get these up. Um, smoker. Let's just let them run for a while. All right, our uh, chicken should be done. Let's have a look at it. Doesn't that look good? Wow. Cut one. Try not to get in the uh, so they're about 172. Perfect. Let's pull them out, see what they look like. scientific method here. I just take them all out like so. Get them all around here. And then you've got this juice in your pan. All I do is just pour that back over the top of it. Put some foil over it here. Corners all nice and tight. Like that. And then we write on it what it is. Then we get a hard pan here. Slide it up here now. There we go. Ready to be loaded in the Cambros and sent out to the job site. All right, that's my process for doing uh, chicken, chicken thighs, bone on in, bone in, skin on chicken thighs. Uh, they're up crowd favorite no matter what I take them to um, here we go you can see the finished product right here let's just take a bite of it Ooh, oh, hmm. a little warm a little juicy <laughs> oh yeah that that's a winner <clears throat> you don't have to even put barbecue sauce on that Anyhow, be sure to go check out uh, Riley's Life of Spice. See all the different ones they have. I really like the Hickory Barbecue. They have a Southwestern. Got a little bit of a kick to it. Uh, sometimes I get that and add it in to uh, different uh, cooks that I do. And then they also have some amazing salsa mixes too. 
you should check those out. So, and then that other one was uh, Adkins. Uh, they're pretty popular. Uh, you can pretty much find this anywhere. I think even on Amazon, but yeah, that's really good. I use their steak and chop uh, rub um, as well. And I've had their barbecue uh, rub. I really, they're all purpose barbecue rub. I really like it. But for some reason, uh, my local grocery stores doesn't carry that, but it carries that one. Alrighty, like I say, you can do this too. It's not that hard. Until next time, my friends. Thank you for watching and grill on. If you like this video, be sure to put a thumbs up down there. Uh, let me know if you want me to do more um, little informational videos like this that I uh, on how I uh, do my catering items like this. I won't give you all my tricks and tr uh, techniques. <laughs> got to keep some to keep the people happy with me. Uh, anyway, I'm going to finish eating this and get this on the road.